The United States Postal Service is committed to providing a safe and healthful workplace wherever our workers' jobs take them, from collections, to the loading docks, to the workroom floors. The USPS has comprehensive environmental, health and safety programs that include written procedures, training and ongoing program administration. In accordance with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA's multi-employer worksite rule, the Postal Service has the responsibility to maintain a safe and healthful workplace for both USPS employees and contract employees. To accomplish this, contractors are informed of the USPS's environmental, health and safety programs and are informed about any potential hazards that postal facilities or operations may present to them while working on site. In return, contractors are required to have comparable environmental health and safety programs in place, must inform the USPS of any potential hazards that may be created by the contractor's activities, and they must perform work in a safe manner. This video was created to provide a general overview of health and safety guidelines for contractors. For detailed information, refer to the headquarters handbook entitled Managing Contract Safety and Health Compliance. All contract employees must notify the designated USPS representative and sign in upon their arrival and departure at any USPS facility to ensure accountability in the event of an emergency. Depending on the specific contract, the nature of the work, and the duration of the work, the contractor may be required to have a USPS Contractor Access Control Card. The designated USPS representative will notify the contractor if this is necessary. The USPS expects that contract employees are trained in compliance with applicable OSHA and EPA regulations. All Postal Service rules, procedures, signs and notices must be obeyed. Weapons, alcohol and illegal drugs are prohibited on USPS property and all USPS facilities are smoke-free environments. Everyone on the contractor's crew must be trained and authorized to implement emergency procedures. Site-specific, readily available emergency telephone numbers must be communicated to all contract employees. In the event of a medical emergency, the contractor must know the proper procedures and have equipment on hand to provide emergency care to their own personnel. They must also have on-site capabilities for contacting emergency medical services. All accidents are to be investigated, documented, and reported to the designated USPS representative within 24 hours, regardless of whether or not the accident resulted in injury. The worksite must be neat and safe. Walking and working surfaces such as passageways, aisles, fire alarm stations and exits must remain clear and unobstructed at all times. Warning signs and barricades or stanchions must be in place before work starts and removed promptly upon completion. Appropriate signs must also be posted on job sites that require specific personal protective equipment. Contractors must have prior approval from the USPS before performing work in a confined space. This approval includes a review of the contractor's confined space entry permit program. To qualify to perform this work, the contractor must have a comprehensive confined space program for authorized employees that includes a written program available at the site, employee training for the various confined space duties, entry and testing equipment to maintain the air before and during entry, and appropriate rescue capabilities. All personnel working at postal facilities must wear the appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE.
Depending upon the work being performed, this PPE may include hard hats, safety goggles, face shields, gloves, safety shoes, and hearing protection. Fall protection is required when the fall distance is greater than six feet or for any other work where a fall hazard exists. Approved methods of fall protection include guardrail systems, personal fall arrest systems, positioning systems, safety monitors and warning lines, and safety nets. Ladders must be inspected before use for any unsafe condition, and if found defective, they must be tagged and taken out of service immediately. Ladders should be tied in or securely fastened in position, or an employee should be stationed at the base to steady it. Ladders must never be moved, shifted, or extended when workers are on them. Scaffolds must be designed by a qualified person and be capable of supporting their own weight plus at least four times the intended load. All employees must wear hard hat protection. Scaffolds and components must be inspected before each work shift by a qualified person. Any potential hazards must be corrected before work can continue. Lockout tagout must be performed before work begins on any energized or potentially energized equipment. Typically, electrical systems are the most common energy sources requiring lockout tagout. However, you must identify all energy sources associated with your work, which may include mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, thermal, or other energy. Electrical cords must be inspected before every use. They must not be run through holes in walls, ceilings, or floors, or through doorways or windows, unless protected from damage. Ground fault circuit interrupters must be used with all power tools and equipment. Lockout tagout of electrical equipment must be performed when working on affected energized systems, including electrical services. Electrical test equipment must be tested to ensure it is functioning properly. As a general rule, gas or diesel-powered industrial equipment is not allowed inside USPS facilities. The contractor is required to perform daily inspections of all mobile equipment. Only trained and authorized personnel are permitted to operate powered industrial equipment. Operators are required to wear appropriate PPE. Powered industrial equipment must follow all traffic rules at the USPS facility. Contractors may use a variety of tools and equipment when working at USPS facilities. Workers must be familiar with the operation of all tools. Tools must be inspected before every use to ensure they are in good condition. OSHA and state safety regulations require all fire protection systems to be fully operational. Contractors must ensure that their work will not adversely affect the performance of these systems. Contractors are also responsible for supplying their own fire extinguishers and ensuring their employees are trained in the proper use of them. Prior to performing any hot work, the contractor must acquire a completed USPS hot work permit signed by the designated USPS representative. The permit will be valid for a single work shift and must be displayed at the work site. One employee, whose only job is to monitor the hot work operation, will remain in the hot work area at least one half hour after completion of the hot work. Prior to drilling or digging, the contractor must notify the designated USPS representative. The contractor must also call an underground utility locating service to determine if any underground utilities are located in the work area. All contractors must have a written program which complies with the hazard communication standard. Before hazardous materials are brought onto a USPS site, the contractor must provide material safety data sheets, MSDSs, and a complete inventory to the designated USPS representative. 
The MSDSs and inventory must be maintained at the work site. The designated USPS representative will inform you of any potential hazards in the work area, including asbestos-containing materials, lead-containing materials, and materials that typically contain silica, such as concrete and masonry products. OSHA has strict requirements concerning specific classes of hazardous materials, including compressed gases and flammable and combustible liquids. Compressed gas cylinders must be secured to prevent falling. Flammable and combustible liquids must be stored in proper containers and must be kept away from ignition sources to prevent fires, explosions, and hazards to personnel. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency regulates or prohibits the use of certain materials, including chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, lead solder and lead-based paint, PCBs, pesticides, and asbestos-containing materials. The contractor must strictly adhere to these prohibition policies and regulations. Hazardous wastes are also regulated and must be properly containerized, labeled, stored, and shipped in accordance with state and federal regulations. The USPS has adopted the US EPA's voluntary program to reduce the usage of 17 chemicals targeted for elimination. Contractors must use products that do not contain these chemicals unless approved by the designated USPS representative. The contractor must immediately contain and clean up spills which may impact the environment. All spills must be reported to the designated USPS representative. The waste must be properly containerized and must be disposed of in compliance with state and federal regulations. Waste cannot be left at the USPS facility unless it is approved by the designated USPS representative. The United States Postal Service is committed to providing a safe and healthful workplace wherever our workers' jobs take them. From collections, to the loading docks, to the workroom floors. The USPS has comprehensive environmental, health, and safety programs that include written procedures, training, and ongoing program administration. In accordance with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA's multi-employer worksite rule, the Postal Service has the responsibility to maintain a safe and healthful workplace for both USPS employees and contract employees. To accomplish this, contractors are informed of the USPS's environmental, health, and safety programs and are informed about any potential hazards that postal facilities or operations may present to them while working on site. In return, contractors are required to have comparable environmental health and safety programs in place, must inform the USPS of any potential hazards that may be created by the contractor's activities, and they must perform work in a safe manner. This video was created to provide a general overview of health and safety guidelines for contractors. For detailed information, refer to the Headquarters Handbook entitled Managing Contract Safety and Health Compliance. Please note that this video is not intended to be an all-encompassing safety and environmental reference for contractors. Rather, it provides condensed safety and environmental information to assist contractors in working safely in United States Postal Service facilities.